What's up, y'all? Happy Tuesday. Happy whatever day it is for y'all. Hope y'all are doing well. Hope y'all are having a great day, great week, great month, great year, all the things. I'm Michaela, and on this channel, we talk about all things from faith, culture, life, marriage, parenting. So the title of this video, as you can see, is Staying Focused. I really want to talk about the importance of focusing in on things I want to talk about you know I think it's an area that we honestly all kind of struggle in when it comes to focusing you know focusing in on the things that either God is calling us to focusing in on things that will make us better um, just just having trouble focusing I read um, that focus is the gateway to all thinking your perception your perspective your ability to remember things learn reason problem solve, make decisions, all starts with your ability to be able to focus on something. So, you know, for instance, in order to learn something, you have to focus on what you're reading. In order to have a perspective on something, you have to focus in on that topic at hand. You have to focus in on what that person is saying. In order to reason and just have critical thinking skills, you have to have the ability to stop whatever you're doing and focus. And so the article was really just saying that, you know, the ability to the, the ability to focus is so important and so critical because your effectiveness in focusing affects your effectiveness for thinking, basically. So if you can't focus, you can't think. And I think we all can relate. We can all relate to being unfocused <laughs> in certain it's in, in during certain times like I know at work I have been so unfocused in a meeting that once the meeting was over and if, if there was something that was assigned to me I potentially or possibly had no earthly idea what to do because I didn't focus during the meeting if we were when we were in class and we didn't focus on what the teacher was saying we could not even remember what was said we could not even begin to process what was said because we weren't focusing when we have to, there's a big problem now with, with critical thinking skills and being able to problem solve and be able to make effective decisions. It all comes down to because we are so unfocused. We are so unfocused in this culture right now. And, you know, I researched, I researched some things on focus. And so um, some benefits of focusing, it helps change your life. So let's say you want to focus on getting healthy eventually you're going to get healthy. If your focus is to get healthy, that means you're exercising, you're eating right because your focus is on healthy. So eventually you will become healthy. If your focus is on God, eventually you will grow close to God because your focus and your attention is on God. Once we can focus our minds on the things that we are chasing, that is the game changer. Until we focus and center our attention on the thing that we are trying to do, y'all, nothing is going to change. I could want to be healthy all day. I could want to have a six pack all day. But until I focus on what it will take to get there, I won't have it. I'll never have it. I could want to be a better wife all day, but until I focus on the things that I'm lacking, on the things that can make me a better wife, I'm not going to become a better wife. So that's one benefit. It will it will change your life. Focusing on something will change your life. But let's make sure we're focusing on the right things. <laughs> um, focus can expand your knowledge. I think that's pretty clear. You know, when you focus on learning something new, you're naturally going to expand your knowledge in that area. So in whatever you're focusing on, whether it's focusing on a, a new chapter in the Bible, whether it's focusing on uh, how to build a house, I don't know, y'all, whatever you want to read and whatever you focus on, you are expanding your knowledge. Right. And I think it just helps you become overall more productive. It just helps you be able to achieve things. It helps you to be able to set goals and focus on achieving them. So now that we've run through some of the benefits of being able to focus and just the importance of focusing, what is keeping us from being able to focus on the things that we want to focus on? Ding, 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 distractions. <laughs> Literally, the thing that keeps us from focusing on anything is distractions. Distractions come in many shapes and sizes. Distraction is your phone. I'm going to get into some stats on our phones. Um, distraction can be your kids. Distractions can be TV shows. Distractions could be, I could be sitting here talking to you, but the minute I see a bird fly by, I'm distracted by that bird. And now I can't even focus on what you're saying anymore. Distractions come in so many different 
forms. And so it's critical to be able to remove distractions when you're looking to focus in on something. You have to be able to identify what is distracting you in this moment that's prohibiting you from focusing in on whatever you're trying to focus in on. And so I think for most Americans and people, we can agree that our phone is one of the biggest distractions ever. Is it productive? Absolutely. I have my notes on here and I'm looking at it. And so it's a productive tool, but it's also a tool that can be so misused. And so a few stats that I saw was that 56% or 57% of Americans say that they are addicted to their phones. On the regular, people check their phones 144 times a day. So we have to ask ourselves when we're picking up our phone 144 times a day, what are we doing on it and how long are we being distracted by this phone or how long are you being productive on your phone? So if you're picking up your phone 144 times and every single time you pick it up is of productivity, you researching something, you're learning something, you calling people and, and, and serving others and spreading positivity. Cool. But if we look at our screen time, look at your screen time and see what, see how your time is spent on your phone and we can begin to remove some of the distractions that may be keeping us from being able to focus in on the things that we desire, but also what God desires for us. But, you know, other things that keep us from focusing on focusing on things. And it's not so much a distraction, but it's having a negative attitude about things, being pessimistic about things. So you're or just being fearful of things. Your mindset towards something can keep you from focusing on something because you are already chopping it up as an L or you're already chopping it up as something that you can't even succeed at. So you're not even trying. And so your our negative attitudes can keep us from focusing in on a thing or even wanting to focus in on a thing because we're already defeated from the jump. We're already defeated from the jump. And then there, there are some things from a health perspective in terms of why we may not be able to focus. We could be dehydrated. I read about that. We could be lacking sleep. And so like new moms, like we just, you can't focus on nothing. <laughs> when you're a new mom, yeah, all that is out the window. It, it, it's not even about distractions. It's about sleep deprivation. I can't focus on anything. So there are some health factors within, you know, physical distractions that um, will require that may require some further um, research around and, and just a, t- a special attention to, I'll just say that, special attention to. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of our distractions are in our control and a lot of our distractions are keeping us from, one, living the life that God has called us to live, but two, just being intentional with the time that we have on this earth. We all have this I think that a lot of us have this perception that we have so much time left, that I have time to do this, I have time to do that. We don't know when our time will end on this earth. So I just want to encourage everyone to let's take a, let's get a list going of what we think may be distracting us from things that we would like to focus in on, whether that's whether focusing in is on your relationship with God, whether you want to focus on your health, whether you want to focus on your marriage, a relationship with someone, your job, um, volunteering, whatever that focus thing is for you or focus things for you that you may be struggling with. Let's figure out why we can't focus on it. And so I can talk about me and and my struggles with focus and and just my personal story with focusing for me it's very hard for me to focus if I don't have clear directions and a clear plan that's keeping me um that's keeping me focused I'm a very tactical person I'm very list oriented. I love a list. I love to check off a list. I just love to execute a list of things that I need to do. And once I have my list in front of me, it's a wrap. I am completely focused in on my list. It is almost nothing that's going to distract me from the list that's in front of me. But baby, life don't give you a list. God has been calling me back to YouTube for quite a while, but unfortunately, my human fleshly desire to have clear direction and a plan and a list has been what's been stalling me and and holding me back. And so that's 
a form of fear. That's a form of not being um, obedient to what God is calling me to do. God is God told me to get back on YouTube and talk to his people. And I take that very simple and clear direction from him. And I want to create bullet points. <laughs> like I want bullet points to go under this. Okay, God, well, what day do you want me to post on? What topic am I going to talk about? What's the flow of this? And dot, 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 dot. And all that equals is stalling and not being focused on that one line sentence that he told me. Get back on YouTube. Period. Simple. Get back on YouTube. And so I can just transparently say that my inability to focus beyond my inability to focus without like clear direction and some type of like, you know, guideline has really stalled me from getting on here. And I mean, that's just the bottom line. My inability to focus in on the simple thing that God called me to do and not making it more complex has what has been what has kept me from being consistent (laughs) like it's me at this point it's me I overthink things I have you know a level of perfectionism that drives me nuts sometimes because it'll keep me from doing anything because I'm I'm planning out everything to the T and nothing is ever going to be perfect and that's that's the trick of perfectionism nothing will ever be perfect we will never be perfect in anything that we do Nothing will ever be done perfect. And so perfectionism will have you so stuck in focusing in on perfection, which is an unattainable goal that you never do anything. And guess what? Then you go on five month breaks from YouTube because you've let the you've let the enemy trick you into this whole mindset of perfectionism, this whole mindset of overcomplicating the one small sentence that God told me. Don't get so wrapped up in focusing on what others are doing. Don't get so focused on comparing yourself to others. Don't get so focused on on the thing being perfect. Excuse me. Don't get so focused on the perfect time. Don't get so focused on the perfect outfit. For Just do it. What we need to focus, focus in on what God told you to do. And I'm talking to myself. Like Once I finally ripped up my list or or stopped even trying to make my list I feel like I could finally hear from God and he was just telling me just do it just do it get on there and start talking he called me to start um, talking about scripture on Instagram I have started doing that it comes out so natural and I overthought that for like five or six months. I overthought the time frame that it had to be. I overthought if people really wanted to hear it. I overthought where I would set the phone up. And, and God was like, just do it. Okay, do it. <laughs> and we have to focus in on what he's calling us to do. So what's some actionable things we can do to focus in? We can pray for focus, first and foremost. You can pray for God to reveal the things that are actually distracting you from being able to focus on him, focus on what you are setting your goals to do, like what's prohibiting me from being able to focus. And I guarantee you, it's some type of distraction that's keeping you from being able to focus in on what God is calling you to focus in on. So one thing that, you know, um, I strongly desire for God to give me was intention and a flow for my channel, not necessarily a list of um, unimportant things such as my posting day and titles and, and this and that. But what is my flow, God? And what I've been what I heard from him, he wants me to talk and then he wants me to talk about his word. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk and then I'm going to say what God says. So. I wanted to pull out some things on God's thoughts on focus and helping us focusing on focus in on God. I'm going to go to Romans 8, 5. My Bible is the NIV. All right. So this will be a verse about what I feel is God explaining how we can focus in on him. So it says, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. So I think that's just a really simple verse. It's hard because 
we do have to deny our flesh daily, but denying our flesh daily will help us focus in on God more. And then another verse about focusing on God is Psalms um, 91 14. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. So focusing in on God and his desires that he has for us, it does require obedience to the things that he reveals to us, but he guarantees that he will love us. He guarantees that he will protect us. He guarantees that if we call on him, he will answer us. And so it's some big advantages to focusing in on God. I wanted to read what God says about focusing on positivity, focusing in on good thoughts. I want to talk about that because focusing in on on the negativity creates anxiety. It creates worry. It creates fear. It creates depression. It creates bad relationships. Focusing in on the negative of things will keep you where you are forever. It'll keep you in that house forever. It'll keep you at the, at that same job forever. It'll keep you in that same relationship forever. It will keep you wherever you are forever because there is such negative thoughts attached to the thing that you can't even see beyond it. Very simple. A very simple one is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice always. God said rejoice always. So that means always rejoice. <laughs> always try to find the positive in something. Always try to see the good in a thing. Always try to see the good in people. Always try to see the good in a situation, no matter how bad it could be, find something good and focus on that because focusing on that negative thing of whatever the thing is, is no good. It's going to pull you further and further into darkness, point blank, period. Okay. And then let's turn to Proverbs uh, chapter 17, verse 22. I love a good Proverbs. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Ooh. And my notes in this, my notes in my study Bible says, the Apostle Paul admonished us to trust God even within the tragedy and choose to dwell on what is good in the person or situation. Y'all, a cheerful heart is good medicine and a crushed spirit dries up the bones. <laughs> what? <laughs> Y'all, it's so much knowledge in this Bible that was written thousands of years ago that can still directly re relate to our life today. It's insane. Stress in your body will create sickness. I have experienced it. Stress can create anxiety to the point where you become so anxious about a thing that now you feel your heart about to beat out of your chest. And now you feel like you're about to have a heart attack. So much power is in our mind. We can think ourselves to be sick. We can think ourselves into depression because we're focusing on the wrong thing. It all goes back to focus. We have to focus on having a cheerful heart. How can you focus on having a cheerful heart? Remove the things that are triggering you. Remove the things. The minute you see something on social media that's sending you into a spiral, click unfollow. Delete the app for a minute. The minute you see something on that news cycle that is depressing to you, cut the TV off. Sometimes, y'all, we need a reset. And I had a reset for about a year and a half. No social media. Cut the news off. And I focused on what was at my front door and, and what was at the door of my heart, which was God. I had to literally remove myself from the world to focus in on what God had for me and to focus in on learning who God was. You, you cannot be double-minded. You cannot be double-minded, y'all. You have to focus in, you, you either going to focus, all right, <laughs> so either you're going to be double-minded or, or we're going to focus in on God. So double-minded, either you're going to go this way and this way all day for the rest of your life. You're going to hear this opinion and you're going to be straight this way. You're going to hear this opinion and be straight that way. Or I'm going to be focused in on the word. I'm going to be focused in on what God says. So whatever little chatter comes over here, don't care. Whatever chatter comes in over here, don't care. Focus on the word. I'm focused on God. I'm focused, focused, focused. And it just eliminates so much unnecessary stress, so much unnecessary, I mean, confusion, so much unnecessary 
schemes of the enemy in, in our life, I'm telling y'all, <laughs> focus on a God. Oh my gosh. Um, cause who want dried up bones? Okay. And then focus on eternity in this, this life is like a blink of an eye. And so if we focus only on worldly things, if we focus only on what we can obtain in this world and lose focus of eternity, eternity is like this because that's as big as my screen will go. Eternity is this, our life that we live on earth. I wish I had something as thin as it, our life on earth <laughs> compared to that. It's a strand of hair. So are you going to focus in on this strand of hair? Or are we going to focus in on eternity? Are we going to focus in on spending eternity with God and set our sights on eternity? What will a man gain if he gains the world but lose his soul? That directly ties back to an unfocus on eternity. You cannot be so focused on the things of this world that we lose sight on eternity. So what does God say about focusing on eternity? Colossians chapter 3 verse one through, verses 1 through 2. And the subtitle of this whole little area is living as those made alive in Christ. And so it says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Okay, I'm going to go to the next verse. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is in your life appears, then you also appear, will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, y'all, I got to keep going. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge and in the image of his creator. Ooh. Enough said. <laughs> Colossians that was Colossians chapter 3 1 through 11 I mean I have nothing else to add no commentary to add go back and read it go back and read it again I'm gonna go back and read that again that was so good um and just highlights the importance of focusing in on God which he will strip you of your old self and replace you with your new self don't focus on that old person anymore that old person is gone don't focus on who people knew you to be, who they may think they still know you to be. Focus in on this new person that God has called you to be, created you to be. Focus in on that because focusing in on who God created you to be from the jump before you were even in your mother's womb will keep you in alignment with the creator. It'll keep you focused on eternity. Continuing to focus on the past and focus on your old self is going to keep you in the past. It's going to keep you with the enemy. And it's going to keep you bound to the things that you have continuously fought to overcome. I think we can we can just end with focusing on eternity. I have some other things like focus on things that will make you wiser. Focus on what God wants for us. And so... You know, those are biblical things that God um, put in his word to help us focus on the things that he um, knows we should be focused on. And so, you know, I want to encourage everyone today, um, jot down some things that you want to focus on. It could be so simple. I want to focus on going grocery shopping on Sunday so we have food throughout the week. That is for me because, baby, we are struggling with not eating out. I want to focus on losing five pounds. I want to focus on working out three to four days a week. Let's take it deeper. I want to focus on growing in my relationship with God. I want to focus on becoming a better wife. I want to focus on becoming a better mom, a better friend, a better daughter, a better sister. Take your list back to God. Ensure that, not, ensure that there is alignment between what he has for you and what is on your list. Better yet, <laughs> go to God first. Ask God, God, what should I be focusing on in this season? Let's, yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's go to God first. 
let's ask God, what should I be focusing on in this season? Better yet, y'all, a thing that has been a game changer for me is asking God daily, daily, God, what is my assignment that you have for me today? What, how can I help the kingdom be advanced on earth today? And when I tell y'all it has been a game changer, I write in my notes, I have my notebook here, I write in my notes, and I literally will just write, I will ask God what is on his heart today. That'll be the first thing I normally ask him after my prayer time when I'm getting into my journal time, is I want to understand what's on God's heart. Because I think understanding what's on his heart will help us understand what he may have us on assignment for for that day. And we cannot seek God only for what he can do for us. We have to seek God to get to know him too. We do not want to be a person who has someone in our life that only calls us when they need something because eventually we're going to look at the phone and, and put it down. Because this is your fifth time that you've called me. You don't ask me how I'm doing. You don't check on me. You go straight into what you need. That's us as humans. We would not put up with that from relationships with others. We would distance ourselves. So we cannot be that person who only calls and reaches out to God when we are in need of something. We cannot be that type of child to God. Parents, we would never want that type of child that only calls us when, we, when they need something. We want a real relationship with our kids. And so that's what God is desiring from us. God is desiring us to focus in on him, focus in on him for who he is, not for what he can do for you, not for what he can give us, not for what he has for us. <laughs> All that stuff is nice and great, but get to know God for who he is. Um, yeah, my prayer today. Um, so let's pray. Father God, I just thank you. I thank you for the ability that you've given me to focus. I thank you for the direction that you have given me. I know I've asked for direction over and over and over. Um, I thank you for being patient with me. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace that you've provided me with on this walk to obedience, on this walk in obedience. Father God, I pray that whoever is on the other side of this screen, um, that you are trying to speak to through me. I pray that their hearts are open to receiving this message, Lord. I pray that they are able to focus in on you. I pray that they are able to seek you for who you are, seek you for the love that you have for them, seek you for your knowledge, seek you to learn more about you so that we can walk in alignment with you, Lord, so that we can bring your kingdom on earth so that we can spread the good news allow us to all get to know jesus christ it is because of him that we are able to talk to you from wherever we want to lord i just pray that you bless us i pray that um you help us to focus in on the things that are on your heart i pray that you help us to focus in on the things that you would have us to focus in on what you would have me to focus in may look very differently from what you will have the next person to focus in on we are all a part of the body of christ and i pray that you help us not get wrapped up on what someone else is doing and lose sight and lose focus on what you were calling us to do lord so i pray that you remove all distractions from all of us i pray that you allow us to focus in on the things that you have for us and i just pray for your um presence in our life in jesus name we pray amen all right y'all i love y'all and i'll see y'all soon in the next video